Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to show you step by step in acrylic paint how to paint this adorable gingerbread man using a cup of cocoa as a hot tub. Um, I actually have been sketching on this idea for like half a minute and then just decided to do like a collage together to get the idea out and I just this is something I've been wanting to paint at the holidays for a while. On the mic is my husband John. Hello. He is going to help me bring this free acrylic art lesson to you by making sure that the camera is pointing at where I'm painting on the canvas, zooming in when it needs to zoom in, capturing the color mixes so you can see the tools, the color every part of the construction of this painting that way you can paint this at home because really the number one feedback I get for why people paint is to relax and to have a calm and enjoyable time and I find that when you guys can see what's going on and really understand concepts techniques and things like that it's a much calmer painting experience now on the website if you go to the link below it will take you to the video page and on the video page you can find the traceable a reference other elements of that if that's helpful to you I also try to put those on Facebook if you're following this from the event um, and if you're coming in from Facebook from the event, welcome. If it's your first time here, welcome. And if you have decided to come back and give me another chance at teaching you art, I want to say thank you and welcome. And if you found me because of my weirdly viral post about artificially intelligent art, welcome. I actually just teach painting here, nothing <laughs> digital. <laughs> <laughs> or any of that. No controversy. No controversy. No. I love all the different ways we say that. I say controversy. Do you say controversy? Uh, not specifically. Oh, okay. I, I was just, <laughs> I was being controversial. Controversial. <laughs> so, how, whatever brought you here today, you are so very welcome. This is a great place to be a beginner. Um, if you have a question, put it all in caps. Um, already we have one. Summer says, if I don't have yellow ochre, what are some aw awesome colors I could use Ooh. instead? You could use raw sienna or you can um, check out my video on how to mix browns. And I have a recipe for yellow ochre in there, I think, from cad yellow, cad red and burnt sienna. I know I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back to a minute, but uh, like I had a lot of brown recipes in there and yellow ochre was among them. So, oh, and a lot of people don't know that yellow ochre and yellow oxide are the same. And again, I find that raw sienna, even though it's a little more yellow, does a pretty good exchange for the color because again, it's still natural. It's still that type of pigment and it tends to work pretty, pretty well. But any yellow gold that's a little biased brown is pretty decent. Okay, that was a long answer to that question. Well, you want to tell them what paint we are using? Yeah, let's go over that. Okay, so first, the canvas is an 8x8, eight eight, and I have the wishes on here, uh, peace and joy. Really, honestly, for everyone, it just feels like every day we wake up to some new thing, we have to figure out how we feel about it. And if I could just give you any gift this holiday, is that nothing interesting happens <laughs> for a minute. I hope, <laughs> I hope you have the most boring, <laughs> uneventful, <laughs> just like we sat at home and talked. That's yeah. what I, I wish for you. Yeah, and I want to send some extra love uh, to um, uh, our fans in the uh, UK. We've been hearing a lot about people being very cold. And if you're not able to paint right now because of temperature, I just want you to know our heart is with you. Not that that warms your home in any way, but that we are thinking about you. Mm. And I hope that things get better really, really fast. All right. On the paint, we have ultramarine blue. It is the ultra of the marine of blue. We have cad red medium hue. Not here, we have cad red medium, it's real pigment. Cad yellow medium, yellow ochre, again, yellow oxide could be an exchange. Burnt sienna, phthalo green, Mars black, and titanium white. Pretty simple palette, so I think exchanges won't be a big mess for you guys in any way. The nice thing about the square is you can go up or down in size very easily and it will be the same aspect ratio now i'm going to sketch out the design today and i'm going to show you how i do that but there is a traceable on the website and uh if you've been following the last week you're going to learn that i only get hot under the collar about two things <laughs> <laughs> only two well they're kind of under the same category okay. uh accusing me of being dishonest <laughs> Uh -huh. Seems to be a trigger point, especially around FTC regulations. I get really hot under the collar around that. I'm like, I follow FTC regulations. And then the other one is uh, shaming anybody for stencils, tracing, um, projection, gridding, any of those art techniques. It's, it's a real frustration for me. I find it to be gatekeeping and it makes me genuinely mad. You shouldn't be shaming other people or mm -mm. gatekeeping them. Like, yeah. I mean, unless you own a toll bridge, like... 
that's that's the only gatekeep. Maybe if you have a farm and you have a gate and you're like trying to keep your yeah, animals maybe there's in. okay gatekeeping. But the one where you make people feel like they can't do what they love to do because you believe that there's one way to do it, that's not okay with me. I think it's okay for you to do that to yourself. It's like gaming. You might play a game and create limitations for yourself because you enjoy it that way, but don't make everyone else play that way. My dad used to play uh, Tomb Raider and he would limit the number of guns he was allowed to have in ammo. But play Tomb Raider your way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is that Does that make sense? It does. It's just, just play Tomb Raider your way. Use the tools you enjoy using and play your way. Sip our coffee. Sip that co- I have coffee too. I warmed up before I show. Okay. Now, let's throw up a step. We do break these down into steps. And, um, oh, that's a good question. All right. Uh, 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 oh, gosh. Um, I, Verma. I'm going to go with Verma because um, I'm not sure how to do the double A. I think it's a a d e d yeah. Verma asks, um, why can't I overlay acrylic paints? Um, you should be able to overlay acrylic paints. Like that's something that they really should be able to do. Um, so we need to do more research into what's happening specifically in your studio, whether it's not binding, whether it is the paint brand itself isn't working as intended, or um, if you're using such an economical paint that they're so transparent, they're not overlaying. Those are generally what it is. But definitely, definitely more research is needed for that because that is, it should overlay. That's what acrylic paint d- does like pretty well is overlay. So that's a, a worry to me, like why that wouldn't be overlay. All right. I'm going to take some burn Santa. You don't have to do this. You could just use it from your palette, but I don't want to mess up my palette. So I'm going to just put some out over my wonderful wishes for the world of boring, boring week. The boring, boringest week of boring, boring. I'm going to take a big brush just because it makes a easy work of this job. And I'm going to paint the whole canvas brown. Isn't that lovely? Just brown. Wow. Step one, so easy. Not great if your paint isn't overlaying, though. <laughs> And I'm just making sure the paint is, you know, really worked into the canvas. I don't care if it's streaky or not. I just want to make sure that the can that all of the white has paint that's worked into it. Right. That's what I'm doing here. That makes sense. It just blends. Um, then either you are not giving it ample time to dry, or it is not drying, and that would mean you're not using acrylic, because acrylic's thing is that it dries. So, um, yeah. It should be drying for you. If it's not, something else weird is going in there. Uh, write a help ticket support at theartsherpa.com and share with me your brand of paint pictures and just anecdotally tell me what's happening for you and maybe we can help you troubleshoot that because there is an answer. I don't know what it is here, but I know there is one and I know there's something weird happening for you. Yeah, so if you uh, go out to theartsherpa.com you can find our wonderful website out there. It has all sorts of resources, like, um, as she said, if you go to the support page, which I think it says, still says support, maybe at the bottom of the page, there's a support button, but you can go to, you can email us, support at theartsherpa.com, and we'll do our best to try to help you with those questions. Also, it's really good if you join our Facebook group, and uh, you can go out there and search for the Art Sherpa official and find our Facebook group. It's a good place to put questions like this because not only can Cinnamon jump in there, but other folks in our community also will come in there and share their thoughts. And we actually have a really nice, really, really wonderful community of people who have um, come out there and shared shared their time and experiences with us, which we enjoy. Are you thinking Anne Marie? Oh, the Facebook group. Oh, well, thank you, Anne Marie, for also the same thing, saying she loves the Facebook group and the community. Um, can you paint acrylic over enamel? Ask Lily. You can, but you may need to do some process or treatment to make sure it binds. And how is Liquitex bodied? Uh, Liquitex comes, the brand of company comes in all bodies. So what you want is heavy bodied. 
if you're doing this type of painting. Um, they have a soft body paint that's a self-leveling paint and they even have a, a ink so they have all of it. Um, it's a very very flushed out brand of paint and um, believe it or not you can get a book about all their products from them. I, I call it the acrylic bible but it's really not. It's, the, it's just uh, liquid Texas information on all their product and that can be really helpful and their website has a tremendous amount of education on their product. Uh -huh. So good to know stuff about that. I mean, I think I'm just going to use this round brush because I'm just wanting to do some dry brushing and this is a nice big boy. This is a number 18 round by Artany. What it is, is it's a hog brush. Your brush doesn't have to be round or square or anything here. I just want to create some dry brushing to start the wood effect that's sort of distant in the background. Um, and so I just need something that's scruffly. I'm going to get it wet, but then dry out most of the water out of the brush so that it's damp. And I'm going to take a bit of my yellow ochre and my burnt sienna together. Smidge of white. All right, and I'm going to just very carefully back and forth horizontally dry brush some wood texture. So my brush is really dry and I'm wanting to let some of the brown show through. It's really about letting it be streaky. We've done some very funny uh, videos where we talk about the wood. <laughs> but we're just making sort of a distant, out of focus wood structure. So a little white, a little yellow ochre, a little burnt sienna. Getting that weathered wood look. You can see I'm just letting that be streaky, but I am being horizontal. But everyone is doing so good today. So good to have you guys show up. I'm so excited to do this particular design today. Um, it's weird. The snowflake that everyone's looking forward to has been like way more popular, but I'm really loving this little gingerbread dude because I feel like that's where I want to be. Just chilling in the cocoa hot tub. Back and forth, just letting it be streaky and irregular and natural. Sometimes when you're learning how to paint, um, you know, fine tuning where you get that sort of natural look can be a bit challenging. But it will come. Just be patient with yourself. And know that this isn't something where you have to be perfect. The big trick here is keeping the brush not too wet. Heavy body paint definitely helps with this technique. And your pressure light. And you just use whatever scruffy brush you have. It doesn't have to be this brush or this shape. Isn't it amazing how quickly that comes in in this sort of like little wood-like effect? Adding a little more white, lightening that wood, <laughs> lighten your wood. I do want things to, you know, be light enough behind our gingerbread man to uh, give contrast. And you can see that the roughness of my brush stroke and that texture helps create that wood effect. Some of my brush strokes are long, some are short. And I'm layering up. Terry wants to know what I use on my wet palette. Well, I use the Stay Wet Palette by Richeson. Um, I, I like prepping my paper with boiling water and I generally prep a couple sheets at a time and then I put an acetate behind my sponge to store the extra sheets. Um, you can use, they have some instructions on the Stay Wet Palette sheets which are pretty good and you can find them on the website about using like 
you know, hydrogen peroxide or uh, like a drop of bleach in your water to keep the mold under control. I haven't had any mold issues, but I change my palette out often and I rinse my sponge out often. And I think there may be some if one has long storage. Look at that go. It's really fun. I'm just making sure that some of my little brownish streaks are lighter and some are darker. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's dry that. I'm gonna dry that. All right. Ba -dum -bum -bum. Hey guys, so thank you. And yeah, I was just uh, answering some comments there. If you uh, if you ever get paint that comes out in a weird way that you're not expecting, definitely call the manufacturers. They generally have a support line or uh, a, an email that you can address. Um, sometimes the manuf the the retailer will have a support line that you or or email or a phone number you can call. But definitely ask if you're getting something that's weird. Call them. Ask them. Generally speaking, it shouldn't come. Uh, the the paint shouldn't come out lumpy or uh, or cottage cheesy now and and what they call that is unincorporated that means that it's separated in the bottom in the container generally speaking uh, a good quality acrylic paint shouldn't unincorporate in its uh, shipping container so reach out to the manufacturer ask them they may have some special things it may be like no this paint it separates that's normal oh Mix it's it up. a separation or is it coagulation uh in this case well i what i said is in any case if the paint is not milled correctly um, sometimes it will separate and definitely write them in yeah, some pictures, the... but you can, um, you can, if it's just clear, it's clear and it's pigment and the pigment doesn't look like cottage cheese, you can just smush it all back together. Cause what's happened is the pigment is separated from the body. Um, but, but if it looks like cottage cheese, just send that back. That's not normal. That's, yeah, that means it's, it's semi curing in state normally. Yeah. So they, even if they tell you it's normal, it's not normal. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to do another little kind of layer because I like I like a little depth to my wood. So I'm going to get a smidge of black. Hold on, hold on. Before you get ahead of your step, mm. I'm going to give you a step. Step in it. And, and we didn't and use brown. a dauber there, did we? No. Okay. No, no, no daubers. If there's a question about that. I'm going to answer it in your quick chat. Okay. Did not use any daubers. Okay. So again, I'm going to come back over. I got to make sure that this brush is dry though for this to work. So I'm going to wipe out again. Little black, little brown. And I'm going to also add some dark. This is a very light touch. And just add some character to your wood, you know? You could probably stop at the first, but I always take my wood a little further. Now, as I come down low, I'm going to come up to about a third of the canvas with some darker. I'm going to go even more firmly on it. See how I'm going more firmly? And I'm going to darken about a third of that canvas down low. Because that's going to be under the cup and it's a little more in shadow. See how we're doing? only about a third and I want this to be streaky as well gonna add a little white into that brown and black mixture I'll definitely blend some weathering through here I'm a heck of a lot of fun if you need faux painting at your house <laughs> <laughs> Most of these techniques will apply to furniture. Yeah, they really do. You can pretty much mimic any wood grain with paint pretty well. It's trompole. Uh -huh. The idea of painting something that looks like something but isn't something. 24 months? Heather C. has been here for 24 months. That's two years of emoji chat yeah. support. Heather, thank you. I appreciate that so much. Let's dry this. We're done with the deep, deep background.
Wow, that was pretty easy. Just got that, you know, nice woody background. It's it's you know it just has to be kinda brownish wood and you know, so don't 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 feel too perfection driven here. Our goal is to just get that nice illusion of wood. So yeah, you can find more resources on our website, DerekSherpa.com. I think I was saying something about that earlier. There's stuff over there for you to find, mini books, reference photos, uh, additional information on what we're doing, um, all sorts of cool stuff. I'm just checking. i got to oh, do okay. a little more. Uh, we have a store we're opening up over there. That's going to be cool. It's not open yet. Well, it sort of, I guess, depends relative in where in time you are watching this. If you're live with which with us, which I would highly suggest you try if you're not live yet, come to us with a live event. But if you're somewhere future in time, our store may be open. So you should always just go check that out. It could be there. We got some good news. I don't know. It goes back and forth. I feel like I'm on a roller coaster with it. Do you feel like you're on a roller coaster with it? I feel like I'm on a roller coaster with it. <laughs> <sighs> thinking good things about that. Thinking good things about that. You ready for your next step? Yeah. Okay. So we've got our little cocoa man here. I'm going to sketch this out. If you're using the traceable, this is a good time for you to use the traceable. I'm wanting to do some placement now. One, because I don't want to paint a bunch of beautiful pine branches and then paint my cup over it, right? I don't want to do all that work just to make it go away. And it's just great to know at this time what's going to be where. So I'm going to come here, maybe center it a little bit and make a nice big base to my cup. I do that. It's like a line, like a smile. What I'm using here is a chalk tool. This is a tailor's chalk tool. It's by the company Dritz which is the one I like. You could also just use chalk from a chalkboard though. Like what you have in school. Just what you want is chalk chalk with no grease or weird formulation. Going to bring a couple little lines up. To my mug, because you know, as mugs will have their lines up. This line kind of curves out just slightly where the mouth of the mug is just a little bit wider than the base. Matching smile. I'm gonna come here and start from pretty close to the lip. Make a little handle out. Joining that in, that's not terrible. And bring this little thing here and we blend into the handle here because it comes back and we'll join there. You don't have to be too specific about it, but it's just good to know that the perspective of it. And again, even though I'm showing you how to do this, I don't think you have to draw to paint. Don't think that that is required in any way, in any way. It's cool though, if you want to learn how to do it. Okay, so now we've got this. We need to make our little snow, our little guy. I want a little room from the top, and I want him to feel like he's very relaxed. So I'm going to make a slightly squished oval up here for his little face. And a little gingerbread arm coming out. Do you know the Muffin Man? I do. And he's right here, hanging out in this cup. <laughs> It'll have a little hot tub moment. Do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man! We're all in there, aren't we? The one who lives on Drury Lane. <laughs> Drury Lane! We're fine. Bring in another little arm. This is, it's great because your gingerbread man, my gingerbread man, they're all perfectly good gingerbread man, right? But, but, do you I'm going to add what, a little marshmallow here. When you're drawing the, mu the Muffin Man, what are you using? That, I'm using chalk. No, what is that? I just had that earlier. It's the Dritz chalk tool. Okay. I went on a whole big I was not paying monologue. attention to your monologue and someone else asked me. So I wanted to know. Oh, okay. Maybe they weren't paying attention. No, it's because the, there's the delay on chat. Remember from when we talk? Yeah, but I, I, I that 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 delay doesn't apply to me. I was just not paying attention. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Dritz chalk tool. Sometimes it messes us up because you guys are like on a delay. I'm just adding little marshmallows that are floating in the cocoa, right? 
you know, they're his little flotation tasty devices. I thought I saw the weirdest thing in chat. Well, I, I banhammered some stuff yeah. earlier. Now, I like the Dritz one, though. I don't like the off-brand one. I like the Dritz one. Maybe, maybe it's in my head, the difference. Maybe. But I actually feel like uh, whoever did the off-brand one sourced it from somewhere that has, like, a chalk that doesn't doesn't draw nicely, in my experience. Okay, that's that step. We did it. You either use the traceable or you uh, drew along with me. Um, there is like, there's information like Sarah, we have, if you've never traced before, I've got a video on how to trace. It's not, it's not as long as this. So you could just watch it and know. And we also include those in the mini books. Mini books are written out instructions that we make to match the videos that release seven to 14 days after that you can download. You know what they also use? Hmm. Steps. Steps. And the steps for the mini book match the steps of the video, which is timestamp. So you can save your place on a video and find it again. Can you microwave my coffee? Of course I can. All right. Oh, look at moderator rainbow dropping a link. Uh, Darcy's like, if you're celebrating Christmas this holiday season, how's that going? Um, well, for us, we're doing it light because we're moving to Ireland <laughs> very soon. And we don't want to have to fit all the stuff in the luggage. So it's been a weird Christmas for us. It's a, it's a no present Christmas. It's kind of a no present Christmas because like the luggage is already its maximum weight. We have to get a bunch of equipment there before we can uh, ship like over our container. Studio. Like the entire studio. It's like it's like a whole thing. So for us, it's been really a trip. My mom's on the cruise ship, so I'm missing her. I think we're going to celebrate together when she comes back. Um, and then we're going to kind of have like a family. We survived the move celebration when we get to Ireland, I think is our current plan i've got to remember to put this on live chat because it gives me most relevant and i don't think that that is helpful all right can you meet me for a second okay. so john's getting his coffee and i'll let him come back before we start start oh i, I can start yeah, I already stepped you, but I can... I can oh, no, no, no. It's okay. I'm good. I can start. I'm going to grab a number four round. We'll restart the step. Okay. I'm going to grab another number four round. I did. That's not what I meant. Okay. I um, I'm going to grab a number four round Simply Simmons brush. I just need a round brush. And I'm going to start putting in some nice pine needles. I'm going to begin by grabbing a little bit of my green and some burnt sienna. Because, you know. Somebody improperly cooked the Sienna. And I'm going to bring a little pine needle. I think definitely out here I like this one. So it's a little line at first. And then I'm going to flick out in a fan little needles. I like some of them to be longer and shorter because I like messy pine trees. I do. I like messy pine trees. And I'm going to bring... Maybe I'm going to be a little more thoughtful about the arrangement of my pine needles than what's here. This is layer one. This is not how they look when they're finished by any means. Some of this down here will feel a little more solid when it's all done. And I'm not being too precious about my area. It's just, I, I don't have to worry too much about my chalk, but I do want to keep it sort of intact. I'm going to paint this a little bit solid because I will capture these pine needles with their highlights. Yeah. A little bit there. I'm going to come up here behind Mr. Relaxy Pants. So lately I've been doing a bunch of different little design things. This is like a 
uh, image collage. I license the images and then I collage them together in a new way. <laughs> Been doing some digital painting, which I really, really, really suck at. And <laughs> I'm going to get Honey or Luna to show me how to use Procreate. So I'm a little bit better. All right. Just going along here. Now you'll notice that I'm being kind of, uh, I'm kind of lining here. That's because I do want some solid green coming out from behind the cup. And we need to dip in water and get a little more burnt sienna and a little more green just to continue on my many, many layers of pine needles. This is pine needle layer one. Yep, they have that. Hmm? They have to come in layers. Hard to make them. Is there a big difference between burnt and raw sienna? Or can, you, can you get both with mixing? There is a big difference, and you can get any hue with mixing, but mixing is always different than the pigment. So I can mix any hue. That's the color. That doesn't mean that in remixing that I won't have uh, elephants or upstairs, that I won't have um, differences in the results I get because of the biases that happen in the hue mix. Raw sienna is fairly yellow, uh, uh, somewhere between cad yellow and yellow ochre, and burnt sienna is a deep rust brown. Now I'm going to be a little more interesting over here about what's showing between and around the pine needles because I think that's just more what I'm looking to do instead of just be, you know having it be total solid mass. I've got a pine cone I've got that will be here, so I will just do this as a solid green. And I might even come into some black. We will be darkening this corner of the cup quite a lot. So it will be in shadow, so it's okay however that sits out. Okay, let's call that a step and dry it before we go on. You just want to make sure you get those thoroughly dried, because as you come back in here, we start adding highlights and definition to this. Um, the uh, you, you really want to make sure that that's dry. And I think if we see it this way, yeah, it's it's actually these layers were pretty thin on the paint, so it doesn't take very long for it to dry. Uh, but don't use heat; just thoroughly dry it. Make sure it's ready for that next layer. And uh, you know, that's not uh, not a lot to say about watching paint dry. Just gotta dry it. How are we loving that? Good. You ready for your next step? I am ready for my next step. So I'm going to take a little of my burnt sienna and green together again, and I'm going to get some cad yellow into it. Kind of brightening it up. And I'm going to also have some of this mix over here with some white. So we kind of have like two values of going. I'm going to begin by grabbing a little bit of my, maybe even another, like even more yellow, green and yellow, rolling it to the tip of my brush. I'm just pulling back short little strokes there and then I can get right into my white here. I'm pulling these back a little bit more like scales. See how we're getting that? Yep. Might even grab a little yellow white here and highlight 
some of these needles this way. So there's some dimensionality to these guys. We're really painting them today. Rolling onto the toe. Little short strokes. Can always get a little of the white here. Maybe a little more green mixed in, just changing up those little values. And highlighting. See how those are much more dimensional? <laughs> Let's pull some. Little bits under here. Highlighting a bit. So the highlights create the shape and directionality of the uh, brush here. Number four round, just a regular old brush, nothing special, nothing extra. It just, you know, is what you'd exactly expect. Maybe a little yellow. And some white. Light pressure for me to do this. This is how I get this is very light pressure. I'm not pressing down hard on my canvas at all. Right? Little highlights there. You notice that I'm not taking away every bit of value of different colors. I'm leaving some of them in so that there's dim like some is darker, some is lighter. Might come back with a little bit of this bright green here for the tips. So we're really painting these. Not everywhere, it's just somewhere. I'm gonna come up over here now. And maybe start out with my bright, bright green. A little more green in here. Sometimes I'll mix it back in. I like to change these little things up a bit. We we'll just get those little moments in. Breaking them together. See those things kind of layer out too. You know, maybe I will put a little yellow there and then I can come over to my green and white. Just capturing like tops of that dimensionality.
maybe a little white over here just so that it layers well. Look at that layer out. All right, let's rinse out our brush. We're doing good. Amethyst. Why did you rinse out your brush? Um, the reason I rinsed out my brush is it was getting really heavy with paint, so it wasn't holding a point anymore, and the paint was starting to get thick because it was drying on the brush because I've been painting for a while. Amy Turner says, hey, Cinnamon, haven't caught a live in forever. Love you guys. Hey, Amy, thank you for making it to a live. <laughs> I'm glad anyone showed up today. <laughs> hmm. That's a... It's a nice day for painting. It is a nice day to paint, though, isn't it? Every day is a good day if you paint, as the great master once said. <laughs> I'm going to continue and on. And then Melody with our... Sheep turns that into the great song that we know it to be today. That's right. That, I think she, that song, I think, launched, launched their career. They ended up going off and... Well, I mean, they were doing stuff before that, but I think that, that took them from like, hey, you know, we have who a are following. You to like, who Whoa, are you? We know who to to some random guy on YouTube knows who Melody Sheep is. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add some little lighter green over my dark green. So you can see why having a very dark green was important. It helps us get the contrast that we need. I like to create little layers. Like this might be a nice one to have really defined going off. I only need a little bit here because the pine cone is going to be there and it will uh, cover most of it into my green and white. Isn't that fun? I just like doing that. Yeah. Well, this more defined one that's right here. I do put a little curve into my brush strokes. I think that helps. It feel like needles a little bit. Some of them are finer, some of them are heavier. Gonna get my yellow green together. There's that white over there too. So I'm just moving the color really through the palette. Kind of focus that on, you know, what would be the tips. A little white and yellow. Just put around, make sure everything has that feeling of continuity. Look at us. We got pine needles. We went, what? Pine needles? What? Yeah, it's fun. I like doing it. Let's dry it and continue on. Ah, let's see here. Um, so Lily, I will ask her when she returns. I think that this is going to come down to what do you like when it looks when you get the finished thing? If you like them... If you like him going tip to stem better than you like him going stem to tip, I think that's kind of a you thing. If you like it that way, do it that way. There's no real wrong way in art of doing things. It's more of a like, do you like it? Sometimes sometimes there's a technique reason for it. But uh, let me ask. So yeah. Lily was curious. There it, is a reason. Um, scales, needles, things that layer in stages, 
you need to put the furthest ones out in first and then you layer back. Otherwise, you'll erase your brush stroke as you paint. Well, so there you go. If I started from the bottom, then when I went up, I'd be erasing the stroke behind it. But if I layer it like this, it will layer in the same way that it looks. Feathers work like this. Hair can work like this. Scales can work like this. Uh, complex structures and plants like the fruit on grass or... Um, Oh, like, uh, like, well, pine needles, uh, certain flowers that are spike flowers will have to layer in this way. So that's why you do that. That's why you go that kind of weird direction. See, this is why you're the teacher and I'm the button pusher. That is why. I mean, but if you want to be I'm, the teacher, I'm no, happy to retire. No, I, I got a button. See, I got another button. Look. I, 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 I'll retire. Button. I don't mind. Seven. <laughs> I'm so happy. Are you going to heat my coffee? <laughs> I'll heat your coffee and I will... Uh, I'll be there for you. I'll be, be there, there for, for you. I just think there's a song. When the rain starts to fall. I'll, I'll be, be there for you. I, I don't even know. I don't know how to sing it because I don't know the, 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 the <laughs> he melody. Does, he didn't watch Friends. And I don't oh, sing. Oh, that's why. Now I do. I got it now. This is a number for Isabe Isakril Filbert. Filbert is the important part of this. I like to do my pine cones with a filbert. We're going to be doing another interesting thing. This is also a layering space. And the reason that it's a layering space is because we have to layer the pine cone up, right? So we will be doing that same concept. I'm going to take a little bit of my black and brown together and make a very dark retirement. color. Hmm? Is it a retirement camp? No retirement for, for me. No retirement. You know, I can't imagine, like, I. one of the good things about my mom being online and painting is I, I feel very optimistic for my future. Like, She's nowhere near retirement. Her vision is good. Her health is good. And I like think to myself, I can do this. As long as people are willing to show up in pain, I can do this. I'm mixing a very dark chocolate brown. And I'm going to come here. And I'm going to stroke using the shape of my brush. My low pine cone color. We're going to come up. And each time I do this, right, I will be kind of erasing the layer before it. But even at this point, getting this set into my mindset on how I'm constructing it will help me make that pine cone. Now, believe it or not, I got to dry this pine cone before I can finish the pine cone. I don't want to call it another step. Let's call it all one step. That's, that makes sense. But just know that it's we're drying it right now and then... Don't give me a new step. Okay. Okay. So we're going to wash it dry. It won't take long. See, it'll just go. Whoosh. See, how it, it, I mean, that, it'll go from shiny to, to matte. When it turns matte, that means that uh, it's generally dry. You can give it a couple seconds more to fully, you know, dry. That's the sound of paint drying. It just, it happens so slowly you can't hear it. That's it. Fast forward. This black blurb That's is it. the beginning of our pine cone. Do you love your black blurb? I do. All right. So now I'm going to add a lot more brown. And some yellow ochre. I'm going to come down here and just barely touch that. Barely tip that edge. Barely tip that edge. Maybe tit. Barely. A little more brown into it. And then we're going to say, oh goodness, right there. But then this one I'll kind of go in more. I don't want to take out the depth in the cone because that's how we really get the There, now I'm going to add, interestingly enough, maybe a little yellow, cad yellow into it, and some white. Let's tip out. 
some of these with a little bit of white. So we're just capturing just some. stronger on that upper edge to show that's where the light source is and that's just a happy little easy way to get my pine cone in pine cone filbert brush is it cheating no <laughs> <sighs> now if you don't have uh burnt sienna you can use burnt umber burnt umber uh, i use sienna because um it is uh, just much easier for me to do that. Let me make sure where I'm out of my battery. Oh, I'm okay. I think I can make it through the rest. I closed all my tabs too. Am I definitely plugged in? I think that you already I'm not plugged in. You took the power box. We'll be right back. Oh, okay. So that's what's going wrong in my life. We'll right <laughs> I charged my bed up, but I, I didn't have the power box for the charger that's here at the show. And so it's like running low on power. It's freaking out. Would a bristle brush, uh, would a bristle brush help give a more textured cone? Or is that a weird thought? That's not a weird thought. That's a great thought. What an artistic thought. And those are the kinds of thoughts that you want to have as an artist. Because, that one came up on me fast. Uh, because... Um, we should always be thinking like that. Will this work? Will that work? Uh, could I try this? Could I try that? We should be very exp experimental and uh, brave as a community. We should. I Yay! I got power. Let me check the power. <gasps> I do! I also accidentally do. So I have my reference on an iPad in front of me. Okay, let's give it a new, new step. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep using my filbert though. I really like this brush. I'm going to be on step eight. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take a little yellow and some cad red together. And I'm going to make an orange. Go ahead and make some yellow ochre into it. <laughs> Maybe even a little white. And I begin to just sort of paint in. Mr. Mr. Gingerbread Man. be kind of in that underpainting stage, right? So we're just getting that first layer on. So like you can see here, I'm using professional paints, all that's true, but it's still pretty streaky at this stage, right? If your paint will not cover the background, you may need to paint it white, dry it, and then paint this color over it. Because you may just not have enough pigment in your And your paint to cover. All right, pretty happy with my with my gingerbread shape, I'm gonna kind of work my paint in here that I have for him into the white, but I'm also gonna get a little of my burnt sienna into it. And get my little toasty marshmallow color kind of going.
I'll come put some cocoa between the marshmallows in a minute, but I just want to get some little marshmallows peeking out the beginnings. That's pretty good. Rinse out. Now I can use my ultramarine blue to darken my red. That'll give me kind of a brick color. I can use my black. I think I'm going to try initially my blue, my ultramarine blue and cad red because I think I'll like that for the finished result. If yours goes to purple, you could switch it to black. I love painting shiny reflective cups, so this is a fun day for me. Now I know I've got a black bead and everything that I'm going to be doing up here. I'm not ignoring that. I'm just making sure I've got a, a baseline. Just paying it in. I know I'm getting a little quiet, but it's just relaxing to paint this stuff in sometimes. I get okay. relaxed too. It's all right to be relaxed. I'm not at this stage too much worried about brush directionality. I've got some layers that I just have to get on here, so... Look at us, we have an underpainting all up and done there, don't we? All right, let's call this a step. You need to dry it? We need to dry it. All right, we'll okay. dry and then we'll do a step. And yeah, you'll see as the, it, this will really see, you'll really see how the color will change sheen here as it goes through there. And uh, yeah, just make sure you get it thoroughly dry. Then we can move along to the next step. <sighs> Yep, well, just trying to paint. Dry, dry, dry. It will dry. Yeah. Oh, tilting up sometimes. Yep. Yeah. And when you're working on the flat surface, it's good to tilt your image up and look at it to make sure all your proportions are remaining where you think they should be. That's I am remember. adding a little bit to my cup to make sure that the sides are matchy matchy. Hmm. Maintain those proportions. Yeah, that's what you see me doing. So that's why I tipped my um, cup up was to do that, to make sure that I could see that and do that. That shouldn't take much just to make sure they thoroughly get that. Like I said, um, you know, Check out our website. You know that we got cool stuff. We love you guys having here. Love having you guys here. Words. I know how to use them. I promise. 
I may not use them in the right order or in an intelligible way at all, but, well, I'll work on it. That should be good. All right. All right. This is a number eight Raphael Artini brush that is a hog bristle brush. And I'm picking a hog brush because I want a scruffy kind of texture so that when I'm doing this sort of gingerbread effect that um, it really registers as what it is. I'm going to grab a little of my burnt sienna and put it into my orange mix from earlier. I'm going to come here and sort of paint in, but almost like in a very rough quality under his little pits, a little bit of this darker brown. So it has very, very rough. Yes. A little bit lighter as I come up. Not as heavy on the paint. And I might grab a little of my black brown from earlier. Let's exaggerate under here. Marshmallows are. A little bit right there. Blend that out. Get some white into this mix right here. A little more yellow into it because we're trying to, it can add red, we're trying to keep it into that orangey gingerbready color. It's fun, fun. There we go, and just lightening them up. We're getting them there, aren't we? Soft, 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 soft. Rinse out a little bit. Little orange into my burnt sienna. Layering it up. Leaving those little highlights and shadows where I have them. Because that's what shapes his cuteness. Add some little bits of tonality here. Add a little bit of dark and I'm just blending that in. Sometimes I wipe my brush out on my paper towel to offload some of the paint. Again, this is just a very soft brush stroke to this.
just running around, really trying to make that uneven and interesting. And still sort of shaping him out, you know? Sort of giving him a little shape. All right, that's what we're going to do there. Okay, and we're going to dry that completely and come back and do some detailing on the gingerbread man. The gingerbread man. We're going to detail him up. I think that'll look pretty cool. Getting some of the... We're going we're gonna to put the frosting on the, the gingerbread man, so to speak. Or, to be exact, actually. Not so to speak. To be actual. I think that's the plan. So we'll be doing that next. Right, he's looking yeah, good. He really does. You ready for your next step? Yes. Never have we painted so seriously in gingerbread Sorry. man. Serious. Um, I want a lot of control over the next part, so I'm going to size down in my brush um, to my number one liner, and that's because I have lots of weird little details to do here, and I don't want my brush to splay out or be rough. And the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brown and black that I had from earlier. And come here and add just a bit of a little shadow on his neck there. Just a big deal for him to have that there. Gives him some shape. I'm going to take my white, maybe a smidge of ultramarine blue. I still want it to be a fairly light color, but I want to be able to add a white highlight and a shadow underneath it so it's three dimensional. I'm going to come here at the top of the head. Paint a little wiggly line. See, I can thicken it pretty easily. This sort of, uh, the way that I'm doing these confections really works for any candy confection painting. So if you're doing something else where there's frosting or this type of decor on a candy or a pedophore, it will work there too. looking pretty good. That's the layer one of that frosting. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of my uh, red and blue because I want some darkness to this. I'm going to try my best to do a good smile on him. This is by far for me the hardest part of the cookie. I don't know why, but it is. <laughs> it's, whether I'm frosting at home or online, the that is the one that gets me. Your smile. The smile is like, oh! I'm going to take a little uh, black on the tip here. Starting to get there, and then he needs a little bow tie. So I'm going to just do green and white. And a little bit of yellow for this frosting color. And I'm going to kind of put the center of the tie in. It's sort of like a round little ball here. There you go, nice little big poof out. Kind of the same thing on the other side. And 
Okay. Now, uh, oh my goodness, look at what I just did there. All right, so how am I gonna fix that is, I'm gonna just take my brush that's wet. Just clean it up there. And clean it up. Okay, now I'm gonna check my hands and dry this whole thing. It doesn't need to be a new step. Um, but we do need to dry it before the next layer. Yeah, sometimes you have to dry between those layers. Just because so you don't do exactly what she did, which is where you're, you know, you accidentally touch something and uh, make it smear or something. So, you know. And, you know, you can decorate your, uh, your little gingerbread person however you'd like to have that person be. Yes, it's your person. Can reflect you in every way. Ours just took on the traditional cookie gender of yeah. gen gingerbread man. Although, but I'm not here to that, I'm not that, here to impose that on you guys at all. That was just a cookie cutter that we had. <laughs> it's just a cookie cutter. It's just a cookie cutter that we had. But your cookie is a valuable and important cookie. However, yeah. I'm gonna take uh, my brush and go right into my white paint here. Do do do. And I'm going to kind of come to the top. Make sure that I create a little highlight. Come in at first, do a little bit of gray. We'll come back with like the the brighter sort of white in a second. I'm gonna get my just bright, bright red. And then even before it's dry, I might get a little red and kind of white here together. A little more red than that. Add a little more yellow to my green and yellow mix over here, and then a lot more white. Maybe take it over here where it's a little cleaner. The top of the bow there. A little bit there. Am I thinking a lot about frosting? Yes, I am. <laughs> and that's okay. We can think a lot about frosting. While that's having it dry, can always come here and kind of make sure that I blended it. Okay, a nice little transition there because we want it to look good, right? We're going to come here into our black and we're going to thin that a little bit on our brush with some water. And a little bit of a shadow underneath that. A little bit of a shadow under there.
might rinse my brush out and kind of get it very thinned. So I saw soften that shadow out. You can use glazing medium if you have any binding problems to prevent that. I just wanted a more little dynamic shadow. There we go, and a little shadow over where the cup, a little bit coming down here. Okay, rinse out. little bit of a highlight on that frosting. Even though it's not shiny here, I'm gonna make this frosting a little bit shinier. It's royal icing. And then the last little, there you go. Okay, is cookie. <laughs> this is how it we crumbles. Up. We're cookied up. Now let's dry it and okay. we'll move on to the cup. Uh, when glazing, how do you know you added enough water? Um, it will, uh, you can kind of see it on the palette. It starts to transparent out on the palette. And um, yes, there can be issues with underbinding, but if you allow the painting to dry for a really long time or you use a glass glazing liquid, you can prevent that all the way around. Um, if you do a lot of water effects, you just spray varnish and then it won't streak on you. So there, we're going to go on to the cup and marshmallows now. I think, you know, kind of doing that layer thing, working for the further thing back to the thing most forward, front, and then, yeah, I think that looks pretty good there. We're probably going to move on to the cup a little bit, I think. Jacqueline! Hi, Jacqueline. Thank you for coming in today. Ah, <sighs> to the cocoa. All right, to the cocoa. Oh, thank you, Deborah Evans. I appreciate that. Let's paint some little cocoa coming between the the little bits of. I'm gonna grab some of this orange here and bring it over to my brown. I'm gonna come between my marshmallows. Got a my number four filbert here. I'm gonna get a little of the white on here and be like kind of like creamierness. Tap the top. Just a little bit between those marshmallows. I just think they needed some. Now, we've got these wonderful little marshmallows. And that color is going to be a little of my burnt sienna and white. But really, really white. Just brush that over. Just capturing that nice little whiteness. 
This one back here, it's, it is light, but it's not as light as the others. So I've just got to find its little value. I have to come back and lighten it again. Make a little corner of one that's peeking up. Slightly darker behind it. So just starting to shape those out a bit. Now while I'm here, I'm going to get a little of my burnt sienna onto my hog brush. This is the number eight Artony round. Doesn't have to be this brush. It's just a good brush. I'm going to tap in a little kind of dusty cocoa feeling. Just getting that cocoa going. Gotta get your cocoa on. I like that. Let me add some more after I add the white. So I'm back to my filbert. And just a highlight of that white. Try to brush a little of that in here. Top of the marshmallow there. And then I can capture this one peeking up because of the value difference there. A little of my brown over into my orange. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Here's my marshmallows. What's the difference between varnish and fixative? Fixative is for pastels and pencils. It is designed to, without discoloration or yellowing of the paper, sort of help these very tender, delicate materials like charcoal or pastel stay fixed to the paper. Um, if you put it on a canvas, it would make the canvas just very gummy. It wouldn't, it was just a totally different product, totally different. Um, a varnish, a spray varnish is a sealant that protects from ultraviolet light, from dirt, from dust. It unifies the finish and, um, it is, is kind of something to like help the piece have a longer life. I'm going to dry this and come back to a next step. These marshmallows and it's starting to come together. Pretty cool. This is pretty nice. I love the little holiday paintings that we get to do. They get to be so cheerful, and they're really great because they get you, know, you hang them up on the wall. And uh, if you know, if you store these between years, good thing to do is don't don't store them face to face. Um, butcher paper works as a good thing to store between them if you're gonna if you're gonna put them up for next year. Um, just some thoughts there. Here's uh, next step. Next step. All right, I'm back to my liner. <coughs> I'm gonna go ahead and get my black thinned on my liner again. I've just added a drop of water. It says the number one Princeton monogram liner. I don't know what's a monogram liner. I think it's just a liner script liner um, from their select line. And I'm going to make sure that.
the front of my cup has this nice black line. I may, I'm going to have to turn my canvas to the side because I will do a better straighter stroke pulling towards myself. Everyone has a directionality where their stroke is stronger. This is mine. I like to make sure that the lip of this isn't too, too thinned, you know, because one, we want to be able to put a reflection on it. It's a fun piece today. I'm like not sorry I did it at all. I don't know why I would be sorry I painted a gingerbread man, but if I was, I'm not in any way sorry. Okay, so that needs to have a dry for a minute. We won't be done with it until uh, we put the reflections on. Rinsing that out. I'm going to go back into my filbert and I'm going to bring some red a little closer to my ultramarine blue just so we can get a, a easier time getting the darker color. So I'm going to come under the lip a bit. The dark shadow. A little bit down the front here. Strong at the bottom. A little more blue as you can see. When I'm feathering up what I'm doing is I'm prepping it to have more of a blended transition. And then a little more red into it, you know, kind of coming up. Just brushing that in. I'm going to be brighter red under this lip. <clears throat> and above it. Kind of leaving some room there. So I'm just capturing the overall value of this mug at this moment.
did not mean to get that shadow there, but it will work out actually in my benefit, so I'm going to let it go. Okay. Red at the top. You know, and then as we come down, it definitely darkens. You know, it shades under the handle. And then slightly brighter at the top. Pulling that handle kind of into that cup. Kind of creating that there. All right. This is, I know, a lot of kind of thoughts on subtle shading and how things are being made. And that can feel a little overwhelming. Blending here. Now I'm going to dry everything and then come back and uh, start to really work details and highlights and shadows. That makes sense. It'll, as you can see, it'll really, it'll really mat out. It'll so that the, all those high, those high bright shiny points will sort of flatten out as the as the paint dries. See? It sort of gets that uniform sort of look to it. So yeah. That looks pretty good. We'll probably continue on adding a little more detail here. Da -da 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 -da. I'm gonna put out a little more cat bread. Just so I have enough. Okay. I'm going to go back into my number one monogram liner. And get a little of my cad red here. I come under the black. Kind of exaggerate how that lip. goes out a little bit. Just a nice detail, if you can do it. Sometimes I'll come back in with a little of my dark green. Need to reshape or push anything back. So you can detail work, you know, your tools quite easily. Okay, now I'm going to come in and get some of my dark here. This is my ultramarine blue and it's deepened with a little bit of, I mean, it's cad red really deepened with ultramarine blue. So that's sort of a shadow that I'm going to use. I'm going to come under the handle here. And make sure that I kind of capture that shadow that's going on right here, especially in where the handle is joining. Bring a little shadow down underneath this handle. <laughs> Coming up a bit. 
And again, if I need to paint in any green, I can do that at any time. So I'm doing that to correct that out. So it's not like you're ever just stuck. If you're like, oh, I need to move that or that needs to change a smidge, you're okay. A little bit of the blue and red under here. little red outline on the outer edge. A little bit of a highlight there. Okay, so those are kind of some detail things that I had to get in. Now I can get back to my filbert. I'm gonna come across Top of my handle here with a very bright red. And the outer edge of this with a very bright red. And bring a little reflection of a very, very bright red. And shadow that up. I'm pulling that down. Those little brush strokes are kind of important to be up and down, huh? Yeah. So when I'm coming down the body of the cup, my brush strokes are going to be vertical. When I am sort of moving a shadow across the lip of the cup, you know, that might change again. down here and just I don't want to take out my deepest shadow but I don't need it quite be quite as dark as it is And it's just, you know, in these little touches that we kind of really try to define uh, how our cup presents to the world. Now I'm kind of coming across in my reflection. Back down. Okay. All right. Let's call that a step. That sounds good. You gonna dry that a little bit? I'm gonna dry that, and That'd we're gonna come good. back and put on some more touches. This is getting really close. You can see how much shape it now has. The cup, cup has that, that wonderful roundiness shape. So we're getting super close now. You know, if you wanted to put a message on this for your your friends or loved ones, you could do that. You could modify this, customize it, make your cookie person your own person you could add a second person second cookie 
They can be hot tubbing it together. You can modify it however you like. Who's hot tubbing it? If you had a second cookie. You could have a second cookie. You don't have to be a single Pringle. You can have a second cookie. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so weird. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of my white and I'm going to thin it with my... Oh, I got some green in that. And I don't want green in my reflection. My white is starting to thicken. I may put out some fluid white. To... So this is golden titanium fluid white. And sometimes when I get aggravated, I'll put a little of this out. Because it prevents my aggravation. It's highly pigmented. And so if I need to do um, something kind of more subtle or whatever I can do that and even thinning it it will really really show I'll have to fix that. I don't want that top thing there at all. You can always come back with a little bit of black. You kind of use the same technique on other cylindrical objects like candles and such, huh? Yeah, very similar stuff is going on. I need to put some black back in. I'll have to probably come back with black to thin my line enough. I'm going to come here. I'll let that have a minute to dry and then I'll come back with my black and thin that line so it's it's thin enough for what we're what we're trying to get. Go ahead and get a little white going. We're gonna say dot dot and then coming across here. A little reflection on that cut there. Thicken it there. It's not my whitest white, but it's it's pretty darn white. Little triangular little reflection right there, kind of capturing the bottom of that cup as you do. Painting a little triangular reflection coming back up that way. It does make a difference. I don't want it thinned, I want it to be nice and visible. There we go. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to come back into my black and see if I can't thin. This reflection just a little bit. Clean it up. It does not do a lovely job of just kind of cleaning that up. I'm going to take this off and then I'm going to grab a little bit of my white white. And just in the center of that slightly blue reflection, add those little pops of white highlight. And I'm going to come here. I 
Add a little bit of an outer edge there. Just, just some, just zhuzh. Now, I'm gonna grab my black, a little bit thinned. Come under my little pine cone here. And add a bit of a dark shadow under this cup. Even coming up a little bit to the handle. And that's a thinned kind of black, so it's not that opaque. And then I'm going to come right under the cup with a very definitive thick line. This was lovely! Guys, oh, uh, welcome Cindy Taylor to Moji Club. Now, guess what? We're done. We're going to sign wow. it. Wow. <coughs> that came along really quick. It, well, I mean, it, it was work. And, and I'm sure if you're painting along with me, you may be four or six hours in because it's hard to paint along and then come back and paint along. Um, but I think that what you're going to find is that, grab some of the, the white that's fluid is that you're really going to enjoy this. This is going to teach a lot about reflections, about value, about it, texture, how we get those things. I think that you're going to really, really like. Um, plus, you know, I think the most wonderful thing about this, I'm going to try to make this as small as I can right here, is that when you paint, you will find that you are super up to doing things like changing the paintings in your house for the time of year. It won't weird you out at all. You'll be like, ah, I'll just do some new paintings. That's pretty cool. Drop that down there, I think. Seems a little bright for me, but I'm going to leave it there. I might tone it down after it's dry. I don't like my signature to come out at me. Okay, guys, did you love this? Was he just a cutie patootie? Just a cutie patootie. Um, I imagine he's going to be one that you enjoy for years to come. Now, I do these holiday painting events every year. So I have a bazillion D lessons. I've got one hoots. I've got two hoots. I've got three hoots. You know, super beginner. Like I have a snowman with a, it's called the boho snowman with some flowers up top. It's good for kids. It's good for first time painters. Um, I did it live at painters and they only give us like a half a second to do a painting. And people got good results. So that's like super beginner friendly. I've got uh, one hoot Christmas trees. I've got uh, one hoot winter landscapes and primaries. There's just a lot. Um, you can check my playlist for more of that and our website, thearchirpa.com. You can kind of search through our content. You can even go back year by year and see what I painted what year. So there's really just something for everyone at every level of your painting journey um, that I think that you guys will like. Uh, I really do wish for you guys the, that your week is just not that exciting <laughs> and is calm and serene and there's just nothing on the news like the most boring news cycle we've seen in years. I wish that for all of us. I want you guys to be good to yourselves and be good to each other and I will see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye!